Hi guys, it's Jane. Um, I, it's not close, close up. I hope you can bear with me for a minute. Today's Tunisian stitch tutorial has basically three stitches, although one of them is the same stitch, it's just modified a little different. The first stitch is the slanted stitch. The second is a modified Tunisian simple stitch. And the third is another modification of that Tunisian simple stitch. Um, you can do any of the stitches you choose. You do not have to do them all. But I would suggest trying them just to see whether or not you like the fabric that is made. Alright guys, let's get into the tutorial. Good morning. Today we are going to learn a couple of new stitches. One being this, that is the slanted stitch. You'll see it slants a little bit off to the right there. Now these next two stitches are basically one stitch. I did three rows of a modified Tunisian simple stitch and basically what happens here is it's a little thinner of a fabric. It also doesn't curl as much. Now this top one that I did three rows of is the same modified stitch but it goes into it a little differently and it almost resembles a knit stitch. So, so let's get into it. Okay? These are basically fairly easy stitches. Okay, let's get into this. Here we go for the first part of the stitch. Now I've got to pick some of these up because the cats have been constantly playing with them. So let me get those through there and we will move on to the slanted stitch. Now as you know whenever we went through the Tunisian simple stitch we basically went this way from right to left or left to right if you're left but basically we are actually going to go the opposite. Now what I'm going to show you is the way that I work this stitch because it's it's a little finicky and you're probably not going to like it. You're going to go in from the left side through and pick up that stitch. You'll go through the left and generally what I do is I will pick it up with my fingers like this and go this way. The purl stitch kind of sits a little further back And that is how we do the slanted stitch. Like I said, the purl stitch from the previous row sits back a little bit. I do pull up so I can see the loop and pull it. I do that on all of these when I am working slanted stitch, which I rarely work because of this. It is so finicky. And of course you'll make sure that you get your last stitch in there. And then you'll go through the last two like normal. And then you'll yarn over, pull through one. Yarn over, pull through two. 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 Yarn over. It's the same return pass all the way back. Like I said, normally you would be going in the stitch from this direction. But for the slanted stitch, you're going to go in from the opposite side. Regardless of what's, what's, whether you're left or right handed, you will be going through the opposite side. So, like I said, I do cheat a little bit. I do pull that loop up so I can see it. 
so that I can go in that left side. As you can see, it's finicky. You're almost reaching across, and that's part of the reason that it is so finicky, is because you are reaching across that stitch. I've even done this before to help hold it, so I can bring it out. Now, when you see this written, most people will tell you to use the top of the stitch, which is fine. And that does help a little bit. Like I said, I generally use my two fingers to pull it up so that I can get into it, which as you can see is still somewhat difficult. Sometimes it's just easier to pull it up this way and then go back in correctly. This row I am telling you is going to be very slow. Then you will go through the last two like normal. Yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through one. Then your return pass, like I said, is the same. Okay, all right, we're going to repeat that row again. Like I said, do whatever means you need to pick that up, but you're going to go in from the opposite direction, yarn over, pull through. You'll do the same with the next stitch. And if you see what I'm doing, I just find it easier to pull that up so that I can get it without fussing and fighting and cussing. Now, you can choose to do this stitch if you want to. Um, I can understand why you would not want to do it because it is so fiddly but it does make a great little contrast in your blanket that is a little bit different because it does give that little bit of a slant to your, pro to your project Like I said, I did so few view, so few rows because it was because it's fiddly. And then at the end, you'll go through the last two like normal. And then your return pass is the same. Yarn over, pull through one, then two. Yarn over, pull through 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 two, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. Now, I've only done a couple of rows, like I said, because it is so fiddly. Even though it does give it a nice slant, does give it a little bit of a different look because it does slant just slightly this way. The next two stitches are what is called a modified Tunisian simple stitch. Now, when you are pulling your, when you are doing your return pass, you are effectively creating a chain stitch. As you can see on this bar here, there is an upper stitch and a lower stitch, and then there is one on the back. With this stitch, you are simply going to go in like normal, like you're going to pick up normal. But instead of that, you'll also go through that top horizontal bar and pull through two. And you will repeat that all the way across. Okay. 
Now when you see this modified Tunisian simple stitch in a pattern, most likely this is the stitch that you will be asked to do. If there's any difference, then they will tell you what they expect you to do. And we'll get into that because there's a different version of this as well. Now when you get into this one, you still have to pick up that top bar. And then you will go through the two on the end, like normal. Yarn over and pull through. Yarn over, pull through one. Yarn over, pull through two. Yarn over, pull through two. Yarn over, pull through two. All the way across, all of these, so far all of our return passes are exactly the same. Now this is a great stitch to use because it does not curl. So again, we're going to go through the uh, vertical bar and the top horizontal bar for the modified Tunisian simple stitch. And we'll do three rows together. Now remember, I have always told you that loose is better than tight. So when you do your return pass, remember to keep that just as loose. It will make your life a whole lot easier when we are doing these sampler blankets. When you are doing just one blanket with basically one stitch, then it's a little bit easier if you are a little bit of a tighter crocheter. And again, going through the last two, yarn over, pull up, yarn over, pull through one, yarn over, pull through two, and you will do that all the way across. And we'll do it again one more time, vertical and the horizontal bar both vertical and the horizontal bar first and it is the top horizontal bar and I pulled a little tighter than I should have and that happens vertical and the top horizontal vertical top horizontal vertical top horizontal, the vertical, and the top horizontal on that last stitch, and then through the two on the end, yarn over. Then it's the return pass, just like normal. That is one modified simple stitch. Now I'm going to show you the other one. And this is the one where if someone says to you in the pattern they have different directions, this is most likely what you're going to see. You're going to see through the vertical, not only through this top bar, but through the back hump. Sometimes that's a little difficult to get. And then you're going to pull through three stitches through the vertical, that first horizontal bar, and also the back bump. So you pull through three. Hope you can see that horizontal and the back bump pull through three. This might be a modified um, Tunisian simple stitch that you may see. There is a 
designer, I believe her name is Kate or Catherine Harper, and she likes to use that modified stitch for one of her patterns. It is a top that she does. Now, it does do the same thing as the other modified version, but it is a little more dense. And then through the last two. Then your return pass is as normal. Chain through, pull through one, then chain through, pull through two, pull through two, pull through two, pull through two, whoops, pull through two, pull through two, pull through two, pull through two, then two, and two. Now, I'm going to show you this with the knitting needle. You're going to go through the vertical bar. Let me pull that up a little bit. And the top bar, and then through that back. And that is how you're going to pick up that Tunisian simple stitch for this version. And I'll repeat that again. through the vertical bar, the first horizontal, and the back bump of that chain. And then through all three. Through the vertical, through the bump, the vert horizontal bar and the back bump, and then all through all three. This one can be a little fiddly if you are a tight crocheter. So um, these are just some different modifications of that Tunisian simple stitch. One of the reasons you may want to use the modified Tunisian simple stitch, the first stitch that I showed you, the first modified version, is because it is a non-curling stitch. Which if you see a pattern that calls for a modified, that calls for a simple stitch, you can always use that modified stitch in place. This is one time when you can do that. Let me get some more yarn. Now, as you can see, it does look a little bit almost like a twisted knit stitch when you do it. And some people like that look for the modified. Um, you don't always have to do that. But let's look at the back. Do you see the difference in the way that they look? There's a little bit of a cleaner look on this one than this. But they're both nice back fashions. Um, you'll see back here where we did the Tunisian simple stitch that you have what looks like a pretty bumpy row. So it is nicer fabric. It creates a tighter fabric um, than the regular. And like I said, do you see how that goes out? in and out. Don't worry about it. Like I said, this is just, these are practicing stitches. This is a way to get yourself used to these stitches. Um, whether you choose to do a scarf, a blanket, I'm doing a blanket um, because I need a blanket. <laughs> so yeah, you'll see a little bit of a difference there in the way that it looks. But like I said, you see your slanted stitches here, then your modified Tunisian simple stitches here. Choose which one you want to do. You do not have to do both modified. Um, I just chose to do that so I could show you the difference in those two stitches so you could actually see there are two. So that if you see a pattern that says modified 
Tunisian simple stitch, make sure that you read the stitch definition and how it's worked to make sure that it is the first modified um, Tunisian simple stitch because there are some designers that use the second one and like I said it does create a slight difference in it but they both are a very nice stitch and do not curl as much as what this original Tunisian simple stitch did so yeah there you go it um, that's it for today's Tunisian simple Tunisian Tuesday Boy, my tongue is getting tied today sorry about that anyway our next stitch that we will work on is the griddle stitch so we will do the griddle stitch next week all right guys hope to see you soon see you next Tuesday everybody play with the stitches have fun with them and you don't have to do any stitch you don't want to remember that but it's always a good practice to learn new stitches I think. See you guys next week. Bye.